while you're on the cardiac service, you're, you're sure to do some lung cases and some lung isolation cases. So what we have here is a little, little model of the tracheobronchial tree, and I'm going to show you how to use all the different things that we have to isolate the lung, okay? So first we're going to use the double lumen tube, okay? And almost always we use a left-sided double lumen tube. Uh, the reason for that is you can see there's a lot of length here down the left main stem, very little length in the right main stem before you have the right upper lobe take off, so this can be a little bit of a problem. So generally speaking, we encourage people to use a left-sided tube, okay, right-sided for more specialized circumstances, such as a left pneumonectomy, you're not going to see a lot of those. So now let's put the double lumen tube in the correct way. So in goes the tube, so you come in, you turn to the left, you go till it stops, then you pull out your stylet, and now you're going to first inflate the tracheal cuff. So now we have a seal here. Now we're going to inflate the bronchial cuff. What do we have? We have a left-sided tube, and we have everything in the right place. We have this in the trachea. We have this in the left main stem bronchus. Now that we've done that, we, we want to ventilate the patient after all. This isn't just an exercise in here. One thing you want to make sure you do is clamp in the correct place. If we want to isolate the right side, if we want to clamp off and not ventilate the right side, we would clamp here open this. And what does that do? That allows air to escape from the right side out so the lung can collapse. That'll help the surgeon out. And then you can put a fiber optic down here and take a look and we'll do more on that later. If we're going to isolate the left lung, we would clamp off here, open here, and again follow my fingers. That would allow you to empty air out of the left side of the lung and allow you to put a fiber optic and look down the left if that's something you wanted to do. One thing you don't want to do, this is a common enough mistake, don't clamp it off here, okay? If you clamp it off here, there's several problems. Uh, so I clamp off here, now the air can't escape. I can't put my fiber optic down there, this is blocking the way. And furthermore, if I should tear this, remember clamps have these little teeth and they can tear things. If I should tear this, I have to re-intubate the patient and that might be difficult. If I clamp here and the teeth tear, I just get another connector. I don't have to reintubate the patient. Now let's talk about what you would see if everything is in the right place. So I'm going to clamp off the right side. I'm going to open this up. And now I'm going to put a fiber optic down here. So we're putting a fiber optic down here. You look out and you see the carina. You see the carina right there. The carina is very sharp. And you would also tell you're in the trachea because as you look anteriorly, you would see the cartilaginous sort of C-shaped things like this, marching down the trachea, okay? That tells you that you're in the trachea. The back of the trachea is a flat ribbon. It looks like a road. So when you look out here and you see everything just right, you see a very sharp carina ahead of you, all right? And you see it kind of looks like being in a big old Gothic church. You see these big arches overhead and this sort of flat ribbon behind you. Okay, that's the posterior aspect of the trachea. And that tells you that you're in the right place. The trouble is it's very easy to get fooled. You can, for example, look here. You see? You're looking here. You're not looking at the carina. You're looking at a division farther down. How are you going to know that this is not a carina and this is a carina? Characteristically, the divisions farther down are blunter. The carina is very sharp. These other ones are a little blunter. The, the trachea has a very regular arrangement of trachea, of tracheal cartilage, like this, boom, 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 boom. Farther down, the tracheal rings are more chaotic. They twist this way and that. There's not that ordered row and ribbon in the back. It's all chaotic. In case of doubt, pull farther back and, and reassess. So you put the tube in, you inflate the tracheal cuff, you inflate the bronchial cuff. Then when you look down with your fiber optic, you're, you're really wanting to see that carina, but you just can't. You maybe see part of the trachea here, you maybe can see around here, you see the blue thing occluding everything, and you're like, you're, you're hunting around here, here you are, you're hunting around, where does that carina go? Carina should be around here somewhere, okay? What do you do in a case like that? Well, deflate the bronchial cuff, and then sometimes you'll say, aha, there's the carina. 
then you just advance it a little more and then you're in good shape. The balloon herniated over the carina. You saw the carina? See? You could see the carina and then you inflate and it herniates over. Well that tells you you have to advance it just a little bit more. Every time you advance it or pull it back, make sure you deflate that tracheal cuff. Remember, this is pseudocolumnar epithelium here. Pseudocolumnar ciliated epithelium. If you just go, <coughs> you're going to really give that patient a sore throat. And they'll remember you in the worst way. So I deflate this. Now I advance it a little till it's just in the right spot. I reinflate everything. And now you see everything's just right. You see the carina here. And what else do you see? You see a little tiny sliver of blue here. Just a little tiny sliver of blue, a little crescent of blue there. And that tells you you're in the right place. I inflate my tracheal cuff. I inflate my bronchial cuff. And now when I look, I see the carina, but I wouldn't see any blue at all. The blue, it's a little bit too far down here. Okay? What's the danger in that? Okay, well, the danger in that is if I do that a little bit too much, I'm not going to inflate the left upper lobe. Okay? And pretty soon you're going to be in trouble because you're only going to be inflating a little bit of one lung. The univent tube is another way to isolate the lung. It's basically a, you could call it, it's a regular endotracheal tube with a bronchial blocker built right in. Now the first thing you'll notice about a univent tube is they're pretty stiff. You usually don't need a stylet in. These things are pretty stiff. They're kind of big too. They're kind of clunky, okay? This is a 6-0 tube, but it's almost like an 8-0. You'll find there's several times when you're going through the cords when you need to sort of jimmy it a little to get it to go through. Now let's just show how you can put this in and block off things, okay? So you put the tube in, go to about say 22 and inflate the cuff. So now you have the tube in here, okay? You've inflated the tracheal cuff, you make sure you can ventilate, all right? Now it's time to block things off. You then advance the blocker until it's in the right side. Then you inflate the blocker like that and now you've blocked off the right side, okay? Now, if you would look with a fiber optic out the end here, you would see what? You'd see the carina. It's always important to see the carina. You'd see the carina, and you'd see this thing blocking off this side, and you'd be able to look down into the left side. Now, let's put it into the left side. If you can't get it to go into the left side, if it keeps going down the right side no matter what you do, then here's what you do. You deflate the tracheal cuff, you turn the entire tube like this. Now what you've done is you've made it favor moving into the left. And it'll go into the left just fine. Okay? And let's see how that would look. And you see it's blocking off the left side. Okay? Now, just like the double lumen tube can be put in the wrong spot, alas and alack, same thing can happen for this. So you can certainly mix this thing up. So let's say you put the it's a, say a short woman or something, and you put the tube into 26, and there you are. You're not going to see the carina. Okay? Then you're going to have a lot of trouble isolating one side or the other because you don't see the carina. So you have to make sure you see the carina. Don't go too deep here. Don't go too deep there. Let's say we're trying to block off the right side. Okay? What happens if we go too far? I'm really exaggerating. See how far I went down there? Now let's inflate it and what's going to happen? Well, I've blocked off the right lower lobe, but I'm still going to ventilate into the right middle and the right upper lobe. What happens if you do that on the other side? Instead of putting it in the correct place, which is here, you put it way, way too far down. Okay, now what's going to happen? You're blocking off the left lower lobe, but the left upper lobe is still going to inflate. Okay? So very similar to the double lumen tube, you want to see the carina and see that the blocking balloon is just a little bit into the main stem, enough to block it off, not so high that it herniates back in, not so deep that it allows ventilation of any of the upper lobes. What about the final thing? Well, that's the Arndt bronchial blocker, and that is pretty much the same idea. Okay, the Arndt bronchial blocker uses a regular endotracheal tube and then just slides a blocker down the middle and the idea is the same. You see the carina and you see the balloon on this side or that side blocking it off. So that's your lung isolation techniques.